Hey everyone, welcome back to Automation. So you probably know this already, but I'm kind of into carbon fiber. Uh, this is my magnum opus, or at least a clone of it. Um, hint, hint, wink, wink. Uh, most of it is carbon fiber. The chassis is carbon fiber. Even the wheels are carbon fiber. The entire interior is also carbon fiber, uh, and the seats are madly cut off. But we won't worry about that now, uh, because this thing is going to be getting a bit of an update. My focus for today is black editions specifically like mercedes uh, amg black edition cars where they take the regular amg and then they turn it up a considerable notch except my twist on this is going to be carbon uh, this car is already mostly carbon but i want to make it even more so so we're going to change the entire body material to carbon and work on a new engine and basically make a black edition hyper version of the magnum opus if that sounds cool Stick around. And on that note, I think it's important to mention that this video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. The nice people at Ridge have sent me a carbon fiber version of their wallet, and my goodness, it was so good that it inspired me to make this video. Again, I really like carbon fiber. My wedding ring is carbon fiber as well, and this thing is sleek, stylish, it's nice and light as well, considering it's basically made out of metal and carbon. It's minimalistic, it's got protection from RFID, I mean, this is pretty much the full package here. And if you don't like carbon fiber, they have a bunch of other styles, over 30 colors and different customization options too. You can go with a clip, you can have a band, it's got a lot of different accessories to check out as well. If you like what you're seeing, be sure to check out the description of this video, there is going to be a unique link, just mine, uh, from Ridge. It's ridge.com slash flux, you'll get 10% off of your purchase there, and yes again, thank you Ridge for sponsoring this video. Alright, so let's start way back at the beginning. The Magnum Opus V3 is what this one is, clone. Now, very importantly, uh, the base chassis is going to stay the same. I'm not going to be modifying that. That's just what comes with the territory. Um, there are some issues with this car, one of them being wheel spin, uh, which is unfortunate. But this is one of my better driving cars, i.e. it is the, the Magnum Opus after all. And I feel like I'm going to ruin that today, so let's go for it. Uh, brand new engine. <laughs> so previously this car had a 6 liter V10 that made 960 or 950 horsepower, somewhere around there, uh, depending on which version. Um, and this time what I'm going to do is uh, we're actually going to drop down two cylinders, but we're going to add two turbos. So let's go for it. A probably a 6 liter again, I just kind of like that style. Basically I'm aiming for around 1200 to 1500 horsepower. I think we're going to hit that pretty easy. So I went up on the bore and I'm low on the stroke, which theoretically should mean we can get a decently high revving engine here, although again we'll have to see how this goes. Magnesium dual overhead cam, oh yeah, <laughs> all of the best for this car. Let's go billet steel internals, lightweight titanium, lightweight forged, and uh, high quality stuff, although I'm not going to purposefully max it out, just because I do want to keep this car semi-realistic. If it had 3 million horsepower, that's not really going to fly. Well, maybe it literally will, but not what I'm going for. Oh yes, two turbos, heck yes, big intercooler on there, or we could go no intercooler and try to be weird, but let's go big. Race preset for now, and we'll come back to it. Direct Injection Race Ultimate, oh yes! Now this is coming along and we do have a carbon intake immediately, sticking with the theme. Okay, so I've done a little bit of aesthetic work on the engine. We have red accents and a carbon fiber theme going on, as uh, as you may expect. Um, that's going to keep going throughout the entirety of this. It makes a pretty sweet 780 horsepower, 779 actually, uh, with no stress and a bit of a restrictive intercooler. If we raise that up, we're probably going to make more power. Oh, wow. Okay. Over a thousand. Goodness. Yeah, wheel spin is going to be a significant issue with this car, and I feel like that's a good thing. Um, and the curve, you know, okay, let, let me be real honest with you guys at the moment. I'm not good at tuning engines, and even though I've been playing this game for literally like over 200 hours, and I have hundreds of videos on it now, I'm still not good at it. I'm, I'm improving slowly, but I'm still not great at it. So if the curve in this isn't perfect, there's your disclaimer. Okay, <laughs> let's continue. So my goal here is, well, we don't have VVL, uh, so we're going to be running with a, 
basic cam profile. A lot of the tuning with turbo engines has to be done here, especially to get off weird bumps like this. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have to work on this as well. Oh yeah, I actually have given this car a uh, exhaust system. I know that that might be blasphemy for us racing driver types, but um, I want it to be at least a little bit quiet and not just straight through all the way or with nothing. Um, again, this car is supposed to be semi-realistic, so that's why I'm working with it like this. This car can handle a ton of revs. 9700 is uh, where we sort of max out. My goodness, we could get all the way up there if we really wanted to. I kind of want to and just make this thing into a screamer. Um, not saying it's actually going to work out that well, uh, but let me try just for fun. Okay, so with cam profile up very high, uh, we're making 1400 horsepower at a cool 8300 RPM. We don't have much down low, like there, there's basically no low end, but man does it hit the power hard up here. Uh, I don't know if I like that or not, but <laughs> I'm very happy to say that it exists at least. Uh, and this is probably restrictive, yeah. That's a pretty nice, <laughs> almost 1500 horsepower, goodness. At some point I have to stop and I'm starting to get to that area because with the quality all the way up, we could probably get this engine to like 2500 horsepower if I was really pushing it. But again, I don't want to. <laughs> I'm turning it up too much. I can't handle the power, <laughs> at least without making the wheels ridiculously wide, which we might do anyways. I'm actually cool with that, 1500 is now our goal, no higher, okay, just, just a little bit higher. Okay, there it is, really, really crap low end, but man do we have a power burst. I'm excited to drive this car, not because I think it's going to be good, but because I'm excited for this ridiculous climb here, going from a, a measly 371 horsepower up to a classy 1600. Yes, I went there. All right. Let's see what we can do about this wheel spin and all of the other problems that we're going to run into because I'm sure there will be many. Okay, so this is the car in its current form. Uh, I really, really dig the purple, but we're actually going to lose it for this on purpose. And uh, I feel like we're going to have to do some other things as well to prevent it from being entirely black, which is sort of the area that we're headed to. Um, yeah, again, this is supposed to be a hyper edition, so we may as well have some fun. Okay, so the car actually has its own carbon paint already, so I'm just going to go ahead and try to color the body panels that and see how it looks. And wow, that is <laughs> maybe a little bit too much carbon, actually? Is that even possible? Why don't we try and color it so it looks a little bit less, well, like this. It's just everywhere. Okay, so this is what the purple looks like, except in, uh, well carbon form and I actually kind of like that better although oh geez yeah no we need to go up on the shine just a little bit that was a little bit too matte but I colored the hood just regular carbon and the car itself is now a purple carbon which is really sweet oh man this green is so nice I uh, feel like if I just turn it up just a little bit in brightness it's like whoa that is a whole new color for this car Except if you consider the off-road version I made a while ago, just put that one out of your mind. But we'll go with this sort of teal for now and maybe I'll come back and change it. Man, I'm liking the way this is going though. We have to fix these seats, I don't know how the heck I messed that up, but <laughs> other than that, things are going pretty decent. Okay, so first order of business, other than fixing the seats, which I've just done really quickly, is going to be changing the rims into something a little bit more aggressive. Not to say that these weren't aggressive before, but I feel like they can be even more so. Uh, as well, I was thinking about dropping the suspension considerably, if that's even possible. Actually, it's not. It's literally as low as it'll go. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> I really like these, like, way over complex wheels. Especially on this car, I think they just look really darn good, so I'm gonna go with these ones this time. Bit of a change from last time, but I think it's gonna be fine. Um, while we're on the topic of wheels, because, well, I feel like I'm gonna mess up the ride anyways, uh, Sportiness 96, a little bit into oversteer. Again, this car is all-wheel drive, so that makes sense. Um, but let's make it worse by uh, increasing the offset <laughs> in the front and in the back. I want this thing to be wide. So I feel like I'm gonna ruin the drivability of this car anyways. It's currently got 20s and I feel like for the style purposes... Oh, never mind. We can't get away with 21s. <laughs> uh, darn. 
they just blow out the front tires. Okay, I managed to fix the front tire blowouts, but uh, I am mildly concerned. <laughs> uh, either way, it's gonna be as it is for now. Um, but while we're here in Black Edition territory, it's gonna need wider tires on the front and the back, uh, just to make up for its newfound ridiculous horsepower. Okay, now here's where things get interesting because I want to do something to this car that I've been doing on the past few cars, stuff that I've been messing around with that I've been having a lot of fun with, and that is putting holes through the body and having them exit in the rear. Awkward sounding, I know, but uh, it is fun and so that's what I want to do today. Let me show you an example. Okay, this is an example of the last car that I made that had it, just ignore that gigantic front end uh, and notice that it has 4445 horsepower and it's also front wheel drive but uh yeah it's got some rockets sticking out the back it's got a bit of a hole in the back uh, this is an example of me just kind of rushing through it and doing it poorly <laughs> it was an exercise in design and my goodness it's definitely going to stay as an exercise and this car is an example of me doing it well this is one of my favorite cars that i've designed in automation. I know it looks excessively awkward and there's just way too much going on, but that back end is gorgeous. And uh, the huge rocket piece coming out of the back with the exhaust actually hanging in there is uh, one of my favorite works of my own art. <laughs> I know I'm tuning my own horn a little bit, but uh, I really like the way this car looks and so I feel like I want to recreate at least some of its ideas on the magnum opus, at least this black edition version or carbon edition. Black carbon edition. That's what we're going with. The back end of this car has always been relatively tame. The sides have also always been relatively tame. And so I feel like it's time that I fix that. Okay, so I made some quick changes. Basically, the uh, back end is wider now. And that also allowed me to fit maximum size tires on there because yes we're gonna need those uh and also some of the trim is mildly broken so i've got to fix that but after that i think it's time that we cut some holes okay so i've made a few subtle changes one the back end is now holy and uh, you can see daylight through it which is nice um and that means a couple extra fixtures kind of added on top to uh make things more fancy. Um, I've been turning things carbon as I see them. Stuff like the underspoiler for the spoiler is now carbon and the spoiler itself. I have increased the size of the exhaust pipes and uh, angled them out just a little bit so they're poking out the back. I just think that's a little bit more aggressive maybe. Um, but again, because this car is just so ridiculous, we'll probably have a big diffuser here. Uh, I also really like how the exhaust pipes look um, and the diffuser might cover that, so we'll see if I actually go with that or not. The uh, exhaust pipes being semi-symmetrical like that is just really cool. Um, and the engine is in the back of this car, so, well, it's a mid-engine car, I guess, technically. Um, so it's a really short run, <laughs> and coming right out the turbos like that, it just, I don't know. It just looks good. <laughs> okay, so that's stage one of the cut-throughs, but I have a few more ideas. Um, one of the ones I was thinking of originally was making a giant cut right here, and then kind of having that be a feeder for the engine, like having this become like a, uh, a big hole where there could be an intercooler or something. So I'm gonna try that idea and see if I can't just make it work, and yeah. <laughs> Goodness, uh, what I, one thing I really need to do is uh, try this whole car against the other Magnum Opus and see if it's actually better or not. I suspect that it probably won't be just because of how wheel spinny it's going to be, but you know, <laughs> I'm trying to help that with the bigger wheels, so we'll see. Okay, this is the start of something good. Uh, that's, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> um, basically, I'm just uh, trying to take these pieces here trying to see if I can fit them into my newfound back end that is going to be awesome. Uh, using some of the techniques I used in the other car, including a lot of these 3D pieces uh, that we can just kind of slap around and reshape the body with, people have made entire bodies out of these and these pieces here, so you can do a lot of stuff. This might be my most controversial piece yet, but I'm trying something new, okay? Trying something new. That doesn't mean it's going to be good right away. Oh wow, it's going to be horrible. <laughs> okay, you might be asking what the heck is going on, and I really don't blame you. Um, 
I've made a few modifications to the back end, including but not limited to a custom one-off carbon wing made up of two other, well, I guess it's three pieces, but basically uh, one of one of these wings here, these are sort of like chassis mounted wings, at least the bottom one is supposed to be, but they're huge, and uh, I fitted it to one of these sort of angled wing pieces um, because I like those and I don't really know how to use them, and I think I found a pretty good use because they fit on there nicely. Very strange, but incredibly cool, so I'm gonna keep that, and now we're building the rest of the design around this. <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh man, I'm having too much fun. That's when you know it's gonna be a good build. Oh yeah, I know you won't be able to see the brake lights from the side. It, don't worry about it. <laughs> this is not gonna be a streetcar. We may as well take the plates off now. Eh, I'll leave them. I like the look. Alright, I've done it. I went straight off the deep end. I'm, I'm just like, you know what? Let's make something absolutely mad, because why not? It's time. <laughs> the Magnum Opus deserves a full-on race car edition. This black edition has transformed, and I used a bunch of body cutting materials to cut out a lot of this. Uh, there still is some wheel stuff in there, but that's fine, because I do intend to cover it up, or possibly cut out the rest <laughs> if I can get in there. It's not exactly easy to cut these wheel pieces for whatever reason. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. <laughs> okay, so now we have a uh, cut off back end on the car. A little bit different than what I was originally going for, but I'm definitely fine with it. Um, goodness, this is turning into something a little bit more special than I had intended. However, that's not a bad thing. The wheels on the back, by the way, max size. They're as big as they can get. Um, offset could be bigger, but I feel like it's pretty much perfect for what we're working with, so yeah, there we are. Now obviously if the back end undergoes a ridiculous treatment like this, then the rest of the car is going to need it too. You can see that I kept the basic distinction. Uh, I want to keep that the same throughout the entire car, so we're going to keep the same stuff, uh, generally speaking. Um, <laughs> the things that matter at the very least. I don't think I'm going to modify the interior, maybe we could put some racing seats in, but uh, it's going to be mostly just this front end next, I would think. You know, it's time that we wide-bodied this car, it just, at least mildly wide-bodied, just, just a little bit of wide-bodying, if you know what I mean. Um, I'm going to use this piece here and then I'm going to cut out whatever it doesn't cover, and it'll look hopefully decent. Um, <laughs> These ones always tend to cut into the bodies, you can see that here. Uh, so the name of the game is basically just to thin it out just, just a little bit so it doesn't do that, and then find a good spot for it and stick it there, and then we can color it up and have it be all nice. <laughs> That's the goal. Okay, so I'm doing some work to try and get everything to blend in a little bit nicer with the car. Uh, I guess I'm making some mistakes here because that's not quite blending correctly, but uh, the gist of this is I just want everything to line up nice and uh, I'm working my hardest to try and get it there. That's a little bit better. It's gonna have a very obvious wide body and a lot of random lines on it, which is not a bad thing. Um, I don't know. I just want it to look a little bit more aggressive. Okay, this now is giving me some really bad but also great ideas. Uh, thank you to this wide body kit for making me do things that I probably shouldn't. Oh yes, wide. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely going square fenders, let's go. That is super aggressive, I really like it. Uh, I just wish that I could get it higher without making it float weirdly like that, but other than that, we good. A <laughs> uh, little bit of floating, a little bit of awkwardness. A lot of awkwardness actually, I gotta fix that. Okay, I realize that my sort of dragon wing modifications are sort of blocking the vision of the driver, but it's all in good fun, okay? That's that's how it was meant to be. <laughs> uh, don't worry, um, <laughs> I'm just basically using these to cover this up, but also at the same time add some weird design to the car because at this point I'm going all out. It's, it's now or never, I may as well make things weird. Okay, that is mildly complicated, but interesting. Um, I think what I'm going to do, just because I don't like how thick this is, is just going to shrink it down a little bit. It just feels too imposing. <laughs> is that a good word for it? Probably not. At the same time, I could always just drag it all the way down and have it sit down low. 
in which case we can then bring the front down this low and essentially have this car rewritten as some kind of ridiculous low hypercar, uh, which it already sort of is, so why not? Let's do it. This front lip, yeah, it's gotta go. Let's make a new one. Okay, so I've made some other modifications to the front and also the side of the car, including but not limited to. Uh, it now has what I'm calling dragon scales on the front, which I think are really cool. Uh, and then also I've done a little bit of work on the back in the same sort of vein. Um, and I haven't made them carbon fiber black because I felt like they meshed better with the body in this color. Same thing with the side stuff, it just feel like it meshes better with the body in this color. Uh, so yeah, visibility is mildly reduced from the driver's seat, but other than that, it's uh, brilliant. <laughs> okay, let's fix the front end. There's some work to be done here. So if we go with classic lips, basically the best option that we have is to use one of these pieces here uh, because it'll wrap around the body. Um, the problem is that it won't go big enough, <laughs> so I think I might have to make something custom because uh, it does not want to extend past its current position um, or really at all, for that matter. I know this car has a lot of fixtures and the game is not particularly liking it. Oh yeah, this is what this car looks like without a body. So this is just all fixtures. Basically the whole front end, uh, most of the back end, <laughs> the whole top engine, entire cockpit. Yeah, it's, um, it's come a long way. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. I could probably remake the body in my own style if I wanted to, but I feel like that might be a thing for another day. An open cockpit version of this car? Absolutely, yes. Okay, so there is a custom lip right there. It's the wrong color, but I actually like this one better than the previous one. Basically, all I did was just take a 3D piece and then modify its uh, axis and stuff until it fit. Uh, nice and easy. But obviously, if we're gonna have it be low as this one is, then uh, we're gonna need to extend it out considerably and then it's just gonna be huge and chonky, so not ideal. <laughs> Still got some work to do on this idea. However, I am liking this general direction. Okay, that is just cool. Uh, overall, man oh man, it's just rocking it. Okay, a little bit more work needs to be done to this front end. I feel like I can do better than just the basics as to where it has been for a while. Obviously, I wanna do more. Uh, notice anything different about the front end? <laughs> well, I just spent a bunch of time redoing the entire front grille, and uh, yeah, it's made out of the pieces that were there before, except this time they are, well, uh, different in, in the sense that there are many of them and they're bigger, and I, I don't know, I just feel like that's kind of cool, and I'm realizing now that this is totally not big enough, so let's make it bigger. Goodness, that is a bit of a difference on the front, a massive difference on the back, and I still feel like I can do more, goodness. So much little stuff to do. The sides are still as barren as ever on this car. I guess that's just its style now, but man, <laughs> I've got a lot of ideas for this. Don't worry, there will still be more after this. And this is not an official V4 or anything. Uh, that will come eventually. Okay, okay, I'm dropping the gloves. <laughs> it's time, it's been a long, bloody time much blood uh, flowing through my veins, thankfully not out of them, but uh, we're going to be finishing up the rest of the car now because I could probably go on for another five hours, but that's gonna have to be at another time. <laughs> time is of the essence, and my goodness, I think I've done a pretty decent shot at it. This is probably the coolest magnum opus I've made, magnum opus black carbon edition, and yes, this is a full-on race car now. Okay, let's try and make it actually drive. So I decided to switch to a 7-speed sequential. It was previously a 7-speed dual clutch, uh, and we can do 495 max. That is quite a lot. Um, somewhere around here-ish, I guess, is that top speed. Um, again, the complaint with this game is that that covers the graph, which I want to see, but either way, wheel spin 33%. Uh, first gear, second gear, third gear, and fourth gear, all susceptible to that. That's wheel spin all the way up to basically 300 kilometers an hour. Beautiful. So the car has an electric LSD, and the power distribution is uh, mostly towards the back. I guess we should probably turn it a little bit more towards the back. That might help with the wheel spin a little bit. And quality is hammered all the way up, because of course it is. 
semi slicks uh, we're actually wow that is beautiful right in between the two so this thing should drive decent depending on how i tune it i'm not going to touch the wheels though they're pretty much perfect i want to see yeah we've shot up in kilograms i mean we got up gone up from uh we were 960 before, but now we're up to 1,112, so there definitely has been an advancement forward in the weight. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but uh, I mean, we have a lot more power, so <laughs> we're going to be able to get moving regardless. The brakes are very, very strong. Um, we might actually have to shrink them, or at least turn this down. One of my old techniques that I used on this car was having large brake discs, but having the pad type be lowered just because it allows for the brakes to cool even though there's six piston carbon ceramics and over here in the old downforce uh we're currently rocking well this is the rear over here we actually have a lot of front wing angle i'm going to turn that down to maybe here and we'll see what that does okay that actually fixed the issue with the downforce um, but I'm wondering, oh yeah, wheel spin is worse. So it really is just one or the other. We're gaining a lot of top speed though. You know, that doesn't make any sense because this car obviously has more downforce than the previous version. As long as we're not going to be bottoming the thing out, then I think I should probably turn some of this up uh, quite a bit actually. You know what, I've decided that for the sake of the drivability and the lower speeds, I'm just going to deal with it uh, for the rest of this because, my goodness, um, I really want to lower this wheel spin as much as possible. This graph is all over the place and that's not ideal. And as this is a regular race car, uh, we have basic interior, basic infotainment, uh, one seat, nice and easy, and then, oh goodness, this is lighter weight, yeah. Um, down in this area, we do have no power steering, which is surprisingly not an issue for some reason. So we have ABS. I guess that's just going to allow me to stop a little bit better. Um, we should probably increase that up. Uh, I know that, I, know, I mean race cars, that's not necessarily what you want, but if we have ESC, we can control our wheel spin, and then I can always turn it off as well if I want to. This might be the first magnum opus with uh, these things. <laughs> Okay, suspension, I don't want to change this too much, I'm kind of fine with the way that it's at, but I'm going to restart over at a race preset, and I'm going to drop the car down low. Okay, let's let's see what it looks like up a little bit so that warning goes away. And it wants it right there. You know what? That's not that much of a difference. I'm going to leave it, and that means that the car has a lot less warnings, so I would consider that to be a good thing. But my goal here is going to be to get that sportiness up to a lovely 100%. I'll just start messing with this stuff until we get there, and then goodness, this car might be ready for BeamNG. Stick around. Alright, I have hit my goal of 100% sportiness, very good cornering, 1.3 Gs, and a drivability of 95%. Yikes, I believe that this car is finished. It's 1,125 kgs. We don't have one-to-one -one anymore, but that's okay. Power-to-weight ratio now is a little bit different than what it previously was. Goodness, this thing is ready to tear up some pavement. Let's go to BeamNG Drive and hit some massive, massive turbo leg. <laughs> now that's what I'm talking about. Alright, so this is what the car looks like in BeamNG. I, uh, <laughs> I think there's something maybe wrong with the carbon fiber texture in BeamNG because it is shiny and uh, my goodness the aliasing on this is ridiculous and yeah it looks like that even in my uh, screen like it, it's not just a YouTube thing that is how it goes but that's okay because the car performs incredibly well just ridiculously well I want to give you an example of how well this car performs by quickly doing a top speed run uh, just straight down here no ESC um, yeah just just going as fast as I can down this way um, and you'll hear some massive pops and burbles and stuff this car is incredible Incredibly loud even with a full exhaust system um, but what makes it interesting is a long time ago I made a land speed record bugo and I remember I was pretty happy to hit 340 kilometers an hour this car very casually has just passed well 
500 kilometers an hour in seventh gear. Look at that back end. This thing has a rake on it like nothing else. And wow, it'll do over 500 kilometers an hour. Easy. I'm very, very pleased with this, and somewhere down the line, I'm going to need to make a version that may or may not challenge the speed record in automation and BeamNG for a car that actually drives. I know it's possible to just glitch the game and start pinging off into existence, but for something actually moving, not modified in J-Beam, this is pretty darn fast. So that's just one aspect of the drivability of this thing. Uh, I made the gears so long that it'll get up to highway speeds here in Canada. Uh, in first gear, um, so if you really wanted to cruise on the highway in this car, you can literally just drive anywhere uh, in first gear. <laughs> You're fine on legal roads. But when you want to get onto the racetrack, there is plenty for you to do. And yes, this car offers some grunt in that department. I haven't really tested the handling yet, to be honest with you. I mostly just have been playing with the uh, ridiculous top speed and like the the downforce that this car has keeps it planted like my goodness um, it really really flies and it excels at the top speed stuff however we'll have to work on the handling to see if I can get something uh, out of it because at the moment I mean I'm going a little bit too fast to turn so keeping in mind that this is a sequential gearbox it is extremely fast and uh, that means well I can keep banging the gears over and over again to try and get to where I want to go or I can just fly off of this obstacle, lose half of my fixtures because this car is full of them, and continue. Yeah, she's still good. One thing I wanted to try while we're in the area is just to give this drag strip a little bit of a run. Uh, starting from the base, but I mean, does it really matter? Let's go, no traction control. I will launch this how it's meant to be launched. Oh, it jumps, oh goodness. Yeah, uh, I think we need a longer section of this pavement, my goodness. 300 and something at the end. Yeah. <laughs> she quick. Okay, one issue that the car is having is that the rear brakes are fading under heavy braking, but I'm braking from 300 kilometers an hour down to like 100, so I think that makes a lot of sense. I don't... <laughs> I mean, I'm not super concerned about that. Okay, so this course here is a bit of a handling course. I don't know if I'm going to be able to stay on it and actually maintain any speed, but I'm very invested to try. Um, something like this where it's low co low speed corners, this car is not really going to ever get out of first, I don't think. Like That might actually be the most optimal gear for any sort of slow track. That's not normally what you would think, but really, really long gearing is causing this. And my goodness, it slides around like nothing. Oh no. <laughs> Back in the days when ESC sucked, I uh, never put it on any of my cars, but thankfully these days, sport mode is actually not bad. Uh, so I'm just going to kick it off in that and kind of see where things end up, because we've made it to the handling section. There's a skid pad over here where we can test out our 1.3 uh, <laughs> rating on the G-Force. However, um, I feel like the car is basically just going to spin its entire way through this, which is fine too, let's be real. I mean, there's always the off-road stuff and then all the bumps and things, but as you would likely suspect, uh, we're not gonna do very well on these. <laughs> so let's go to an actual racetrack right after we run over this really bumpy road just for fun. So this car has really stiff suspension. Uh, <laughs> again, as you would suspect, I made it as stiff as it can go, generally speaking, but I mean, we're kind of just flying over the bumps at 100 k's an hour. No problems at all. Alright, <laughs> one more thing. Let's ramp off this into a ridiculous height, and then we'll go and do an actual race. Just for fun. <laughs> yes, totally worth it. Alright, down you go. And it's a fixture pinata. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go for an automation test track lap. I feel like it'll be a bit of fun to try this. This is a bit more of an open track, so we should be able to get up into something that isn't first gear. Uh, it's also an easy one because, again, I'm not the best of drivers. And the only baseline time I have is five minutes to do two laps in a car that I made that was supposed to be sort of a hybrid futuristic car. So I think we're going to be able to beat that. But are we going to be able to actually set a decent time? I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's go. 
Yeah, there's a bit of smoke coming out of the pipes on this lad. Uh, I'm going to quickly pause and put it into sport mode because I feel like that's the best call for this. Um, <laughs> and we'll give it, uh, give it the best shot here. You can see there are a few widgets around things that we need to pay attention to. Uh, you can see what I'm doing over in the bottom left. And there is actually a G-force counter over here so you can see what kind of Gs I'm pulling in the corners. Probably enough to rip most people's faces off. Let's go for it. Okay, <laughs> that's a lot more smoke than what I'm used to. It was not smoking this much on the grid map, and immediately I'm going too fast for that first corner. I have a lot to learn. <laughs> I feel like I really need to overdrive into these corners in order to get a decent speed out of them. Uh, and I'm also going to downshift as much as I can for this upcoming corner, <laughs> use some of that engine braking, and first gear through. Hopefully that was decent, I don't know. Uh, this is a banked corner, this is not particularly tricky in any sort of slow car. It's actually kind of fun in a slow car, but here everything is scary. <laughs> Especially this next part, which is a long straight of death. Five gears is um, probably too much. Let's slow it down. <laughs> We can, should be able to fly through, but again, I am uh, moderately afraid. This is mostly a test lap anyway. Uh, the next lap will hopefully be better as I fly out into the dirt once again. I'm, I'm going to consider two times in the dirt to be not that bad. Oh, this is a chicane. Oh, I forgot about this thing. Basically, what I found out from this testing so far is that this car is so ridiculously quick that it's too fast for the corners if you really are pushing it. Like, especially these kind of corners, you gotta slow down majorly to be able to get through this stuff. And using engine braking as well to be able to do it, um, still not enough. <laughs> still not enough. The sport thing is keeping me from having massive wheel spins and times way off the track, but, I mean, I'm still getting darn close. Okay, flying lap, let's see if I can do better than a two minute three. I think I can. Oh. Never mind, I screwed it, holy. Oh, darn. Well, uh, the engine is broken because the engine's in the back of this car and it's fairly sensitive. Um, <laughs> oh man, this did not go as well as I thought it might. Okay, so we're at the West Coast map and I feel like it's time that we raced against some of my more favorite creations, including the previous uh, Magnum Opus, the Magnum Opus V3. Um, the reason being, well, I don't think this is much of a fair fight, so uh, that makes it more fun for me, but also, I think that's just where this car excels. <laughs> it's really darn good in these drag races, and I'm very curious to see how kind of, like, what kind of a time I can lay down with it, so let's go. Okay, the game has it loaded in in Chrome, uh, which is awesome, but not quite what I had anticipated. Uh, I'm going in sport mode, I think that might actually cut my power, I'm gonna go into off of uh, off of any modes. Oh, we're staged. I'm a little bit too far forwards. Oh man, it got a serious jump on me because I'm not used to this new drag race section. That car is wickedly quick and I, well, I'm gonna have to do it again, but an 8-2 is the time to beat. Okay, there we go. Oh, it's messy. Oh my goodness, it's real messy. <laughs> Holy 7-8, and I was like flying all over the place, wheelie off the line. Oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> Let's do it again. Except this time, maybe I won't pop a tire halfway through. Clean, super clean. Oh yeah, come on, fifth gear. 7-4, holy. Do I have anything that, that that's that fast? I'm not sure I do. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Okay, you know I had to do it to him. It's time to kick it off with the Bomero. This is the 2900 horsepower all-wheel drive variant. Uh, and it is a wickedly quick car, as you can likely imagine. Uh, it has a lot more power than me. Oh, I just flunked it right off the line. I went into second. Oh, man. Okay, let's see what kind of time it lays down, though, to see what we're dealing with. Eight. Oh no, it's not fast enough. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try and race it head to head, but man, unless the AI gets a better time here, it is not fast enough. I'm really hot off the line on this one. 7-6 and another 8-0. Oh. 
Goodness, okay. Something faster, what do I even have? Power isn't everything, but I feel like it's time to go up against the Hellhound, which has 4,450 horsepower. All wheel drive, of course. This is going to be a monstrous battle of the of the deaths here. The blue versus blue, carbon versus not. Can I do it? Okay, as long as I can line myself up, I think I have a good chance. Oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> that car is super, super fast, I should clarify. But the AI might not be able to handle it. 7.5 and a 7.8. Goodness. <laughs> Still not enough. Oh no, what else do I have? Okay, this is my most powerful car over there. I believe it has somewhere around 4,700 horsepower. Uh, and if that can't beat this, I don't know what is. Um, <laughs> and apparently I have crossed the line and so have they. Oh, please let me go through. Oh, I messed it up, but I'm kind of curious to see how fast that thing will go. I forgot that I was in first already and didn't need to shift, but... Eight still, oh man. You know what? I don't have anything faster than this car that I can think of. Seven four, other than one of the cars we did in the Drag Race Showcase, is just so quick that I'm not sure I have anything that can even come close to beating this car. And I feel like that needs to change. Maybe next time. Anyway guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments, and if you like these magnum opuses, be sure to check out the other ones in the series. There have been four others, or three others, somewhere around there. I'm having a lot of fun making these cars, and I feel like this one turned out extremely well. Uh, so yeah, please give me your thoughts. <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed this video, and thank you again to Ridge for sponsoring and inspiring this video with their carbon fiber wallets. Uh, be sure to check them out. Once again, my code is ridge.com slash flux for 10% off. I'll see you guys again next time. And yes, I will crash into the tire barrier. Don't worry, you don't have to ask. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, it's time to take some time to say thank you to those who have chosen to support this channel via the join button as channel members. Uh, these guys are consistent and I appreciate them a lot, my goodness. This list is growing and I'm very happy for it. If you want to join them, the join button is there pretty obviously uh, underneath the video. So we have in the advanced supporter tier, Overlord, QT Bear, Terry Williams, Janval Palms, a GA Pope, Davis Hester, the German dude, a Mickey K1, Sleep64, Childish Sin, Bookhole, Jug, Antisocial, and Jared. Thank you guys so much for your support. My goodness, you guys are killing it. <laughs> I appreciate it a lot. I'll see you again next time.